This for me is the essence of express cooking. I've got a little bit of time to myself, doesn't happen that often, and in two days time I've got some people over for supper. So I can get ahead now, get everything cooked, and when they come, I will be able to entertain them and feed them without so much as getting a glowing brow. What I'm making is a real favourite of mine. It's my lamb, caramelised onion and olive tagine. Really, it's a stew, but with fantastic deep Moroccan flavours. Start off with a kilo of diced lamb leg. And you'll notice that I'm not browning the meat. It's traditional when making a stew to dredge the meat in seasoned flour and then brown it. You'd have to do this in quite a few batches. It would take a long time. So this is a real express shortcut. The important thing to know is it doesn't make any difference and you really get the flavour of the meat this way too. The caramelised onion element does not come from my slaving over a hot stove and letting onions sweat, sweeten, cook down for two or three hours. It comes out of a jar. They are quite sweet, so you don't need to use too much here, but 100 grams. Wonderful, shiny and dense. And now some olives, because it's really important to counter the sweetness of the onion with the saltiness and tang of black olives. You need about 150 grams of drained weight, so if you're buying a jar of them, it's about 350 grams. I use pitted olives, which normally come in brine, and I know purists look down on them, but I promise you, you don't want everyone having to eat spoonfuls of stew with stones in their olives. Four tablespoons of wonderful alligator skinned capers. A little bit of spice work now. Two teaspoons of ground ginger. And that imparts a rather gentle but still resonant heat. And, you know, you can't evoke the taste of Morocco without some cumin. Two teaspoons again, gorgeously grassy. And I want garlic not just as a flavouring, but as an actual component of this casserole. So I want a whole head, but the cloves just broken up. Don't worry, no peeling and dropped in. And actually what will happen is that the garlic will soften immensely. You can just squish the bits of garlic out as you eat. Finally, a bottle of red wine. Lovely fruity red wine. And this is the joy because there's really nothing to do. It's all in one pan and just let it come to the boil, letting the flavours all start to mingle together. And obviously it makes my life easier that I'm going to reheat this in two days after it's been in the fridge. But the point is, it's not just about ease, it's actually about the flavours, because letting this sit for two days in the fridge will really allow the flavours to mellow and get so delicious and the meat so tender. Okay, so it's come to the boil now. It's going to clamp on a lid, put it in the oven. It's on pretty low, 150. And I can forget about it now while well, it cooks for two hours. And then I am pantry bound to start the pudding of all puddings. And the tagine is cooked and cooled. Oh, so this can go into the fridge. Job done. So, fast forward two days and I have people coming for supper. Do I look stressed? Well, absolutely not. There's no need to be. I have supper ready and waiting for me in the fridge. All I need to do is apply heat. So the thing about this express get ahead strategy is really this. It makes for effortless entertaining. Day is done and dinner is a breeze. Just want to heat up that tagine. Mm, there we are. And in fact, I am now using an actual tagine. It's a shallow base dish with a tall conical lid. Because it's so shallow, it will heat up much faster. I only need half an hour. I love the sombre dark beauty of this. 
this bit of foil but I'll put its hat on when I serve and it will look beautiful. So the oven's at 200 and we'll take half an hour and I can get on with a few other things at a leisurely pace. And now the couscous, which is the perfect accompaniment to the tagine. But I have a rather non-Moroccan way of making it. It's express, it's easy, and it makes sense. I've got 500 grams of couscous. Then I want about a teaspoon of coarse salt, or half that amount if you're using fine flowing salt. And half a teaspoon of ground ginger. This echoes the flavor in the tagine, but without overwhelming the couscous, because this should be a comforting blanket, not too forceful. And I simply pour water from a recently boiled kettle over. I don't measure it, I just make sure it comes about five centimeters above the couscous. And then cover with cling, and by the time all the water has been absorbed, the couscous will be ready. It is the perfect express ingredient. And now for my final flourish. Couscous is ready. You can see there is no more liquid visible. Needs a bit of a fluff up. Use a fork for this. And then just spoon it into a large bowl. I love a large bowl. And then, and this makes such a difference, grate some orange zest all over the top. And the zest gives you the oil of the fruit and all that wonderful aroma, but it doesn't dampen it as it would if you put the juice in. And now, warm tagine out. There it is, still darkly glimmering. I want to cover that, but not obscure it, just highlight it with a leafy sprinkling of coriander. That is the herb for this. It's got exactly the right earthiness. And because this deserves to be bejeweled, and this is the express way, I don't get the seeds out of a pomegranate. I go to a supermarket and buy the seeds already in a tub. Gorgeous. And with the minimum of effort, a sumptuous supper is served. I was going to give you too much. <laughs> no, it is like too much. I love eating out of bowls. I always feel more relaxed. I like a shoveling action. <laughs> <laughs> Sit tight. I have a sweet treat in.